Hello everyone, today we are going to solve O-Level Maths D, Paper 1 in a session October, November 2018, Paper 1, 1. So let's begin with the first question. So in question 1A part, we need to evaluate this fraction. So first we need to make the denominator same. Um, 7 times 5 is 35, so 35 is a common denominator. Now we need to cross multiply, 2 times 5 is 10. 7 times 1 is 7 and 10 plus 7 is 17 so the answer is 17 out of 35. Now for the B part uh, first we need to convert the mixed number into improper fraction so 2 by 5 times 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 that is 6 by 5 so 2 times 6 is 12 and 5 times 5 is 25. So this is uh, 12 out of 25. Now for question number two in A part, uh, write 17 one half percent as a fraction in its simplest form. Okay, so 17 one half, two times 17. Okay, 17 times two, two times seven is 14. Two times one is two and plus is three. So we have 34, 34 plus 1 is 35 out of 2%. So 35 by 2% is basically 35 by 2 divides 100. So this would be equals to 35 divides 2 times 100 is 200, right? Okay, now let me convert it into simplest form. So uh, we can divide it by 5 times table. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 4 is 20 and 0. So we have 7 out of 40. Is a simplified answer in terms of fraction. Now for the B part, first we need to solve the bracket. 6 plus 4 and inside the bracket we have 1 minus 0 0.4. So 1.0 subtract 0 0.4 we have 0 over here and 10, 10 minus 4 is 6, 0 minus 0 is 0, so we have 0 0.6. And 4 times 0 0.6, 4 times 6 is 24, and 4 times 0 0.6 would be 2.4. And 6 plus 2.4, uh, 6 plus 2 is 8, and 8.4. So the final answer is 8.4. Question number three, y is directly proportional to square of x. So it means from here, y is directly proportional to x square. And from here, y is equals to some constant times x square. Given that y is 8 when x is 4. Okay, so just substitute y equals to 8 and x is equals to 4. So 8 equals to k and we have 4 square. So 8 is equals to k and 4 squared is 16 and to solve for k we have 8 over 16. This is equals to k. 8 times 1 is 8 and 8 times 2 is 16. So from here the k value is 1 by 2. Okay, now we got the k that is 1 by 2. So from here y is equals to 1 by 2x square. Okay, now we need to find y when x is 3. So y is equals to 1 by 2 and 3 square. So y is equals to 3 square is 9. So we have 9 by 2. Or we can convert it into decimal as well. That is y is equals to 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is um, 8. And we have 1 left. And 2 times 5 is 10. So 4.5. 9 by 2 is basically 4.5. So the y answer is 4.5 when x is 3. Question number four, during one year, the mass of a child increased from 25 kilograms to 30 kilogram. Calculate the percentage increase in the mass. Okay, so for the percentage increase, we can say 30 subtract 25 divides the 25 and times by 100. So this is equals to five over 25 times 100 right okay so first we can multiply 5 with 100 so 500 divides 25 okay now let me convert it into simplest form by dividing by 5 5 times 5 is 25 5 times 1 is 5 and 100 
5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10 and 0. So it is 20% of the weight increase during one year. Question number 5. In A part, we need to factorize completely. So that's pretty easy. The variable A is common and the uh, hmm, uh, uh, coefficient 3 is common. So if we can take 3 common, we are left with 3 times 5 is 15 and A is also common. And plus 3 times 1 and B is left. So the factor uh, factorized expression is 3A into 5 plus B or B plus 5. Now for B part, we need to factorize this expression. So first we need to arrange the terms. Um, if uh, I can take the k terms, 6k and plus 2kx and minus xy and minus 3y. Okay. Now let me take 2 common and k common. 2 times 3 is 6. k is already common and we are left with x. Negative y is common. We have uh, y is common. So x is left and positive 3 is left. So the two factors uh, we got is x plus 3 and 2k minus y. These are the two factors. Question number 6, we have given the function f of x. In a part, we need to find f of negative 6. So just substitute x equals to minus 6. So f of minus 6 would be equals to 3 over negative 6 and positive 4. So we have 3 over minus 2. So 3 by minus 2 is minus 1.5. Now for the B part, we need to find F inverse of X. So for F inverse of X, we need to, uh, in the first step, we can say Y is equal to the function F of X, that is 3 over X plus 4. And then we need to replace the variable Y with X and the variable X with Y, so Y plus 4. Now we have to solve for Y. So we have Y plus 4 is equal to 3 by X. And from here, y is equals to 3 by x minus 4. So this 3 by x minus 4, this y is um, f inverse of x. Or we can write it down y minus 4x over x. This is the inverse function. Okay, question number 7. The value of each term of a sequence is 4 more than the value of the term before it. The third term is 13, uh, 17 and the fourth term is 21. In A part, find the first term. Okay, so we have 17 is a third term and 21 is the fourth term. Right? So we have 17. When we add 4, we got 21. So uh, the number before 17, we need to subtract 4. For, from 17, if we subtract 4, we will get 13. So the second term is 13. And from 13, subtracting 4, we will get the first term. So 13 minus 4 is 9. So we can say the first term is 9. Right. Now for the B part, find an expression for the nth term of this sequence. Give your answer in its simplest form. Okay, so for the nth term, as you can see, the sequence is 9, 13, 17, 21. And every time we add 4, adding 4, we will get the next term. Right. So this is obvious that the sequence can be 4n. Right. So when n is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, but the first term is 9. So in 4, what we add to make 9? So 4 plus 5 is equals to 9. Let me check for the second term. 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 plus 5 is 13. So this is the nth term formula, 4n plus 5. Now for question number 8, in A part, write down an irrational number which has a value between 4 and 5. Okay, so first uh, between 4 and 5, if I can say, let's say x is an irrational number that lies between 4 and 5. So 4 is basically square root of 16 and 5 is basically square root of 25. So all the values that lies between square root of 16 and square root of 25 are the irrational numbers that in between 4 and 5. So x, we can say x can be square root of 17, 
square root of eighteen square root of nineteen up to square root of twenty four you can pick any number so let's say i can answer this x square root of seventeen you can take any number from square root of seventeen to square root of twenty four now for the b part coffee is using number cards to form a five digit number his number is a multiple of eight if it is a multiple of eight it means it must be divisible by eight right complete the final digit of his number okay so if he has a number one two three four and some number here and it must divide eight right so we can say eight times one is eight and we have 12 so for 12 we can say 8 times 1 is 8 9 10 11 12 we are left with 4 so we have 43 so 8 times 5 is 40 and we are left with 3 so 34 8 times 4 is 32 32 so we are left with 2 so with 2 what we may uh, what the last digit would be uh, to uh, so that it can be divisible by 8 so with 2 8 times 3 is 24 so we have 4 over here so 8 times 3 is 24 so if we can take the last digit 4 that number is completely divisible by 8 Question number 9 in the diagram A, F, G, B. A, F, G, B. B, G, D, C. B, G, D, C. And E, F, uh, F, E, D, G. F, E, D, G are parallelograms. Okay, 1, 2, 3. We have given 3 parallelograms. Uh, e, F, this is E, F and BA produced meet at H, okay? The angle uh, BGF F is 130 and uh, uh, DGF is uh, 120. Now in A part, we need to find BGD, okay? So where is BGD? BGD, this angle we need to find, okay? So that's pretty easy. We know that the complete circle is 360 degree and 360 is a sum of 120 130 and this angle G so we can say angle G plus 120 plus 130 this would be equals to 360 so we can find angle G by doing 360 subtract we have 0 3 plus 2 is 5 1 plus 1 is 2 so 250 so from 360 subtracting 250 we will get 110 so the angle is 110. Now for the B part, find A, B, G. A, B, G. A, B, G. This angle we need to find. Uh, as we know that A, F, G, B. This is a parallelogram. So opposite angles must be equal, right? So if this angle is 130, this angle is also 130 right so the angle b let's say this angle is x so this angle is also x and sum of all angles of uh, parallelogram or it's a, it's a basically quadrilateral uh, having four sides so sum of all angle of this quadrilateral is equals to 360 degree so we can say that for the second part one angle is x the other is x it is 130 plus 130 this would be equals to 360 so 2x is equal to 360 subtract 260 so from 260 subtract 360 is 100 and 100 dividing by 2 this would be equal to 50 so we can say that angle is 50 degree the angle x is 50 right okay now for the c part find hfg hfg where is hfg h f and G this complete angle okay so H F and G is this angle is the sum of X X is 50 and this angle so how can we find that angle uh, so first uh, we know that if we consider this quadrilateral right um, we have angle G is 120 this angle is also 120 right let's say this angle is Y 
and this angle is y. So first we will find this angle and then the complete uh, straight line is 180. So let me do it over here. So for defining y using this quadrilateral the angle is y plus y plus 120 plus 120 and this sum is 360. Right? Okay. So 2y is equals to 360 subtract 240. And uh, we have uh, 2y is equals to um, 140. Sorry, 120. 120, yeah. Because 360 subtract 240 is 120. And to find y dividing by 2, so this would be equals to 60 degree. So the angle y is 60, angle x is 50, and we can find this angle by doing uh, the complete straight line is 180 degree. So if I can say that angle x plus angle y plus let's say this angle is z z is equals to 180 considering this straight line e f h right uh, we know x is 50 y is 60 we need to find z and we have 180 right so angle z is 180 subtract 60 plus 50 is 110 Right. And from 180 subtract 110, we have 70 degree. So this Z angle is 70 degree. Right. Now we need to find H, F, G, this angle. This angle is a sum of X and Z. Right. So we can write this angle is a sum of X plus Z is X is 50, Z we got is 70. So this angle is 120. Right. Now for the D part, we need to find FHA. Where is FHA? We have FHA. This angle we need to find. Okay. So that's easy as if we consider this triangle. So first we need to use this concept that again A, uh, H, A, B. This is a straight line. And this complete angle is 180, right? And we need to find this angle. Let's say this angle is alpha. So alpha plus 130 is equals to 180. We can easily find this angle alpha. So alpha would be equals to 180 subtract 130. So 180 subtract 130, this would be equals to 50. Yes, alpha is 50. Right. So alpha angle is 50. Angle Z is 70. So we can easily find this angle. Right. So by doing sum of all angles of a triangle is 180 degree. So if I can use that triangle, if I can write, we have angle alpha, we have angle Z and we can find angle H and this is 180. Alpha we got is 50. Z is 70. We can find angle H equals to 180. So angle H would be equals to 50 plus 70 is 120. So 180 subtract 120. This angle H would be equals to 60 degrees. So we have done with question 9. Moving to question number 10. The diagram shows a closed box. The box is a cuboid. The measurements are in centimeters. On the grid below, complete an accurate drawing of the net of the box. Do not uh, draw outside the grid. Okay, so the measurements are in centimeters. So something is already drawn. So let me count one, two, one, two, three, four. So two, four. So this side is 2, 4. So means the base is already drawn. And we have 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 4 is already drawn as well. So this is 3 and this is 4. This 3, 4 is drawn and this 3, 4 is drawn. It means they already drew the base and the front and the back side. Right? Now we need to draw this side and this side. These two sides are left. Okay, so we have 2 and this side is 3. So 2, 3. We need to draw 2 and 3. So that's easy. So this is 2, and 2 and 1, 2, 3. So this would be one side of the cuboid that we need to draw. And the other side would be in this direction. 1, 2, 3. Yes. 
so we have done the drawing of the net question number 11 we have given n uh, giving your answer in standard form find in a part n square so n square is basically equals to 4 times 10 exponent 5 whole square so we can split the power so 4 whole square times 10 exponent 5 whole square so 4 square is 16 times 10 exponent 5 times 2 is 10 so we can move this decimal point one unit to the left it would be 1.6 times 10 exponent 10 plus 1 because we are moving one unit right so it, the answer is 1.6 times 10 exponent 11 right now for the b part we need to find 1 by n so 1 by n this would be equals to 1 by 4 times 10 exponent 5 right so we have 1 by 4 times 10 exponent minus 5 and 1 by 4 is um, if i can divide it is outside and 1 we have 0 and 10 4 times 2 is 8 subtracting 2 is left another 0 bring the 0 down to 4 times 5 is 20 and the answer for 1 by 4 is um, 0 0.25 0 0.25 times 10 exponent negative 5 moving this decimal point one unit to the right we have 2.5 times 10 exponent minus 5 minus 1 because we are moving one unit to the right so the answer is 2.5 times 10 exponent minus 6 question number 12 by writing each number correct to one significant figure estimate calculate and estimate for the value okay so to one decimal one significant figure so we have 6 and the next is 1 so we keep the 6 as it is and replacing the other with zeros double zero point zero one significant figure we have three and the next is zero so we have keep the three as zero point zero three right and divide we have one and then nine so it's nine so we need to add one to make it 20 so we have 20 right okay so we have 600 times 0 0.03 and then dividing by 20 so if we move this decimal point one and two units to the right so we can cancel the two zeros right so we have six times three over 20 six times three is 18 and 18 out of 20 so uh, two times nine is 18 and two times 10 is 20 so the answer is nine out of 10 or 0 0.9 Question number 13, the length of the times of the telephone calls made by a lead during one week are summarized in the table. So time in terms of minutes we have given and the frequency is given to us. On the grid, draw a histogram to illustrate the, the distribution of these time. So we have time in terms of minutes are horizontal and frequency density is vertical so first we need to find the frequency density so if i can draw the column for frequency density and we all know the formula for the frequency density is equals to frequency over class width so this is the frequency f now we need to find the class width so the diff uh, class width is basically the distance between the intervals the 0 and 10 it is 10 10 to 20 it is again 10 20 to 25 this is 5 25 to 30 is 5 30 to 50 this is 20 yes now let me find the frequency density that is frequency over uh, class width so we have 10 by 10 that is 1 15 by 10 is 1.5 10 by 5 so what is 10 by 5 so we can um, 5 times 1 is 10 by 5 is 5 times 2 is 10 2 yes we have 12 by 5 so 12 by 5 5 times 1 is 5 5 times 2 is 10 and 5 times uh, 4 is 20 so 2.4 2. and next we have 16 by 20 okay so 16 by 20 we can say 2 times 1 is 2 and 0 2 times 8 is 16 so 0 0.8 so these are the frequency densities 
so when the time is from 0 to 10 the frequency density is 1 okay so 0 to 10 interval is this and frequency density is 1 so let me draw the histogram from 0 to 10 now for the next 10 to 20 it is 1.5 10 to 20 1.5 Now for the next we have 20 to 25, that's 2. 20 to 25, this is 25, it is equals to 2. Next interval is 25 to 30, 2.4. 25 to 30. We have 2, 2.1, 2, 3, and 4. And the last interval is from 30 to 50, 0 0.8. 30 to 50, 0 0.8. This point is 0 0.8. So this is a histogram of the given information. Now for question number 14 in A part, we need to evaluate this. So 1 by 3 exponent 0. Anything exponent 0 is 1. Minus 1 squared is 1 and 3 squared is 9. So we have 9 minus 1 over 9 and this would be equals to 8 by 9. Now for the b part, we need to simplify this expression. So we have the negative exponent, so we need to do the reciprocal. So x6 over 27, and now the exponent is positive 1 by 3. Now we can split the exponent separately. So we have x6 and its power is 1 by 3. And 27 is a cube of 3. 3 cube is 27 and its power is 1 by 3. So we can cancel the 3, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, so x squared over 3 is the answer. Question number 15, a 5 sided spinner is numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I should have spun the, spun the spinner 200 times. Okay, now the total number of spun is 200. The results are shown in the table. Um, number spinner lands on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we have given the frequency. In A part, calculate the relative frequency that the spinner lands on 3. So relative frequency is basically equals to frequency over number of thrones. The number of thrones or the number of spuns is 200. So we have dividing by 200. So for 3, the relative fre uh, the frequency is 50. So we have 50 over 200. This is the answer. Now for the B part, Bingham spins the spinner 20 times. How, uh, now this is 20 times. How many times would you expect the spinner to land on 3? Okay, how many times it lands on 3? The frequency for 3 is 50. And the number of spuns are 200. Now she did 20, so times by 20, right? 0 is cancelled with 0. 5 times 1 is 5. Uh, yes, and 20 is cancelled with 20. We are just left with 5, sorry. Yes, we are not cancelling 5 here. Now for the C part, I should have claimed my result show that the spinner is fair. Is his claim correct? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so I think his claim is not correct. No. Now, because what is the reason? Because when the spinner is fair, it means all the frequencies are equal. It spins 5, the numbers are 5 and 200 times. So all the frequencies must be 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. So all the frequencies must be equal. So we can say that if, because if the uh, spinner was fair, spinner is uh, the frequencies would be same for each side. Yes. 
question number 16 uh, a boat travels from p to q p to q at q it turns uh, through 90 degree and travels to r as shown in the diagram it then returns from q to r to q and then to p okay follows the same route in reverse qp is 6 km and q uh, sorry pq is 6 km and q to r is 9 km right uh, the first part of the journey from p to q to r takes 3 hours the return part of the journey from r to q to p takes 2 hours okay now in a part calculate the average speed for the whole um, journey from p to q to r and back from r to q to p okay so speed average speed as we know that speed is basically equals to distance over time right so we need to find the total distance from p to q to r the total distance is 6 plus 9 and 6 plus 9 is equals to 15 so p to q to r the distance is 15 r to q to p the distance is 15 right okay so the total distance is 15 when we uh, for going and for back it is again 15 now we need to find the time taken. So the time taken uh, for the first part of the journey is 3 hours and for the return part of the journey it's 2 hours. So 50, uh, 15 plus 15 is equals to 30 and uh, 2 plus 3 is equals to 5 and 5 times 1 is 5 and 5 times 6 is 30. So we have average speed is 6 km per hour. Now for the B part, the bearing of uh, Q from P is 40 degree. Okay, the bearing is given. Q from P, this bearing is 40 degree. Uh, in the first part, calculate the bearing of R from Q. Okay, so we need to calculate the bearing of R from point Q. So for this, we need to draw the, straight, uh, the north line at point Q. So this is a north line at Q. And we need to find the bearing of R from Q, right? So this is basically this angle we need to find. So from north line to R, right? So this angle is 90. What is this angle? We need to find this angle. So as we can see, both the north lines are parallel. So this angle is 40. So this angle is also 40. So the complete angle is 90 plus 40. That is a bearing of um, R from Q. So the bearing of R from Q is 90 plus 40. So 90 plus 40 is 130 degree. Now for second part, we need to calculate the bearing of P from Q. The bearing of P from point Q is basically the north line at, from, at point Q. We need to draw the north line and from north line to the line P. This is the complete uh, angle. So as we know this angle is a sum of 40, 90 and this angle is also equals to 90. Right. So 90 plus 90 plus 40 is the bearing of P from Q. So we have 90 plus 90 plus 40. So 90 plus 90 plus 40 uh, this would be equal to 220 degrees. Now number 17, in A part, express 1200 as a product of its prime factors. So we have given 120. So how can we make 120 times 10? This is equals to 1200, right? So we know that the prime factorization of 120 is given to us. That is 2 cube times 3 times 5. And the prime factorization of 10 is 2 times 5 is 10. 2 and 5 both are the prime numbers. So this would be equals to 2 exponent 4 times 3 times 5 square. So this is a prime factorization of 1200. Now for the B part, um, write, uh, find the smallest value of n such that 120 times n is a square number. Okay, so 120 times n. So we have 120n. So if we have 120, the prime factorization is 2 cube 
times 3 times 5. What number we need to multiply with this prime factorization to make it a square number? Uh, if it is a square number, it means that power should be even. So this power is odd. How can we make this power even by multiplying by 2? The power would be 4 and this power is 1. This is 1 odd. So multiplying by 3 and multiplying by 5 to make the power even. So now 2 exponent is 4, 3 exponent is 2 and 5 exponent is 2. So now this is a square number. So we multiplied these numbers. 2 times 3, 6 and 6 times 5, 30. So by multiplying 30, we can make 120 times n is a square number. So that n is equals to 30. Now question number 18, four interior angles of a hexagon are 100, 110, 120 and 140. The remaining two interior angles are equal to each other. Calculate the size of one of these uh, interior angles. Okay, so hexagon has basically six sides, right? Because we have given the information um, in the question that four angles are this and the remaining two are equal. So total six angles, so it is obvious that the size, uh, sides must be six. So the sum of all angles of a hexagon is basically equals to 180 times n minus 2. So this is 180. Hexagon has 6 sides. n is 6. n is basically sides over here. So 6 minus 2. So we have 180 and we have 4. So 180 times 4. And if we can do 180 times 4. 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times 1 is 4, 5, 6, 7, so 720. So sum of all angles of a hexagon is basically 720. So, okay. so the sum is 720, so we can add all these 6 angles and this would be equal to 720. So first angle is 100 plus 110 plus 120 plus 140 and they said the remaining two angles are equal so if I can say that the two of those angles are x so we have x plus x x plus x and this sum is equal to 720 right okay so let me add all of them so 100 200 300 400 and then we have uh, 4 5 6 7 so 470 plus 2x this is equals to 720 so 2x is equals to 720 take away 470 so let me do 7 to 0 subtract 470 0 subtract 0 is 0 we have 6 over here and from 12 subtract 7 so 12 minus 7 is 5 and 6 minus 4 is 2. So we have 250. So x would be equals to 250 divides 2. Right? So we have 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times uh, 2 is 4. And 2 times 5 is 10. So one of those angle is 125. The remaining two angle is 125. And the size of one of these interior angle is 125. Question number 19, we have given a triangle ABC. Okay, now in A part, measure angle ABC. Where is ABC? As you can see, we have A, B, and the other side is C. So this angle we need to measure. So we can use the protector and we can measure that angle. So that's pretty easy. So put the protector accurately in that angle is uh, we have 90 95 96 yes that angle is 96 96 degrees now for the B part in this part use a pair of compasses and a straight edge only in first construct the bisector of angle B A C so angle bisector B A and then C so angle bisector of that angle A so that's easy so we need to use the compass 
put it on A and cut AB and cut AC, right? And put it on first arc and draw another arc and for the second arc, draw a new one. So this point of intersection is the angle bisector of the angle BAC. Let me draw the straight line, connect it with A. Yes. Now for the second part, construct the perpendicular bisector of AB, perpendicular bisector of the line AB. So we have a line AB. How can we draw the perpendicular bisector? So for perpendicular bisector, we need to open the compass that is more than half of a length of AB. So if AB, this is more than half, yes. So put it on A and draw an arc on both sides, sorry. Right. Same, put it on B and cut the two arcs. This point and at this point. So these are the two points of intersection and this is a perpendicular bisector of the line AB. Let me connect them. Yes. So we have done with 19. Moving to question number 20. So we have given the two matrices A and B. In A part, we need to express 2A minus B as a single matrix. So what first we need to find two times of A. So 2A is basically 2 times 2, 4, 0, minus 2, 2. And then subtracting from B, that is 4, 6, 3, and minus 2. Okay. So we have 4 minus 4 is 0, 2. Minus 3 is minus 5, 0 minus 6, minus 6, 2 minus minus plus 4, 2 plus 2 is 4. Let me write down the answer, 0 minus 5, minus 6 and 4. Now for the B part, we need to find A inverse. So A inverse is basically equals to adjoint of the matrix A over determinant of the matrix A. Right. So first, let me find the determinant. So at the top, let me do the determinant. Determinant is basically a cross multiplication. So determinant of A is basically 2 times 1 is 2, subtract 0 times 1 is 0. So 2 minus 0 is just 2. So the determinant is 2. And how can you find the adjoint? So I can write it down as 1 by 2 and the adjoint over here. So for adjoint of 2 cross 2 matrix, we need to change uh, the sides to 1, changes to 1, 2. And here we need to change the signs. Minus 1, 0, that would be 1 and minus 0. Minus 0 is just 0. So this is the inverse of the matrix. Or we can write down as 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 0 and 1 because 2 by 2 is 1. Question number 21. In the diagram, the equation of the line through B and C is B and C. So this line is 6x plus 7y equals to 42. Okay. Through A and B is this. A to B. This line is, we can say, y equals to x by 5. Right. Now for the first part, A, the region inside the triangle ABC is defined by three inequalities. One of these is Y is greater than X by 5. So Y is greater than X by 5, it means more when we can find the region inside this triangle. Write down the two other inequalities. Okay. So for this, we can say for this equation, its lower portion is shaded. So we can say uh, 6x plus 7y is less than 42. This is one of the other inequalities. 6x plus 7y is less than 42. And the third inequality, as we can see, this is a straight line. And this straight line is uh, x is equals to 2. Right? So uh, more than 2 is shaded. So x is greater than 2. So these are the three inequalities um, that shade the region inside the triangle ABC. Now for the B part, the line Y equals to KX 
passes through the triangle ABC find all possible uh, integer values of K. So the line is y equals to kx. So it means the y-intercept is 0 and it passes through the triangle ABC. So when the y-intercept is 0, so it means it, it within this triangle ABC, it passes through this triangle. So from y-intercept is 0, this is a starting point of the line. So it can be line anywhere. So it means the gradient of that line must lies between OA and OC, right? Okay, so if the k is a gradient, right? So it means the k value must lies between the gradient of OA and the gradient of OC. So what is a gradient of OA? So if we extend the line OA to B, so OA gradient is equals to the gradient of the line AB. So the gradient of the line AB is uh, equals to 1 by 5, right? So the k value must lies between, if I can write down that k is an integer and its value must lies between uh, we can say the gradient of OA and the gradient of OC. The gradient of OA is 1 by 5 and K and let me find the gradient of OC. O to C. So this point C is X over here is 2. So here x value is 2, right? How can we find the y value? So we can substitute x value in this equation to get the y. So 6 times 2 plus 7y is equals to 42. 7y is equals to 42. Subtract 6 times 2 is 12. And from 42 subtracting 12 is equals to 30. And so y would be equals to 30 out of 7, right? So what is 30 by 7? So that is a value for, sorry, that's the value for y. So we have the two values x and y. We can easily find out the slope of the line. Uh, for, uh, so at point C, the point x is 2, the point x is uh, 2 and the y is 30 by 7. So we have the two points, right? And we know that the gradient or the slope is change in y over change in x. So we can find the gradient of OC is change in Y is 30 by 7 over change in X that is 2. So this is equals to 30 over 2 times uh, 7 is 14. So 30 by 14, right? So let me convert it into simplest form. 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 5 is 10. And it is 15 over 7. So 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14 and decimal and then 2 point something, right? So its slope is 2 point something. So the gradient for OC we got is 2 point something, right? And what is 1 by 5? So 1 by 5 is basically 0 0.2. So the K, grade, K values must lies between 0 0.2 and 2 point something. Right. And keep in mind, they said k must be an integer. So what are the integer that lies between 0 0.2 and 2 point something? So to make it visualize, let me draw the number line. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Right. So we have 0 0.2. Let's say over here 0 0.2. And we have 2 point something is over here. Right. So what are the integer values that lies between 0 0.2 and 2 point something? So the integer value is 1 and the integer value is 2. So the two possible values of k can be 1 or 2. So we can say k is equals to 1 or k is equals to 2. So these are the two possible values for k. Question number 22. The diagram shows the triangles A and B. Uh, in A part, describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. Okay, so A to B. This is obviously a reflection along this line. If I can draw this line with the pencil. Along this line, it is a reflection. And what is this line? This line is Y equals to negative of X. So it is a reflection along a line Y equals to negative X.
reflection along a line y equals to minus x. Now for the B part, triangle A is mapped onto triangle C by a rotation through 90 degree clockwise origin 0 0 draw and label triangle c on the diagram okay so a to c rotation 90 degree clockwise and about the center okay so we have a this is a center and it is a rotation and it is clockwise and 90 degree so this direction is clockwise this is a point on triangle a it is one unit down and for triangle c this is one unit to the right so this point is 1, 2 and 3 units down and from here 1, 2 and 3 units to the right. And this point is 1 to the right and 3 down. If 1 to the right, it means 1 up. So 3 to the uh, right and 1 up. So this, these are the three coordinates. So let me draw the triangle C. And label it. Now for the C part, triangle B is mapped onto triangle C by the transformation T. You find the matrix that represents the transformation T. Okay, so B to C. B is mapped onto C. So as you can see, the coordinates for B is minus 1 and 0. And for C, 1, 0, minus 3, 0, 3, 0, minus 3, 1, 3, 1. So means X coordinates are different, uh, opposite. Uh, with the opposite sign, the y coordinate stays the same. So, what would be the matrix representation? X, uh, the matrix is minus 1, 0, 0, and 1. Why? Because x uh, are negative. Then the y value stays the same. Question number 23. In the diagram A, B, C, D uh, is a parallelogram. Okay. A, B, C, and D is a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel. X is a point on BC such that BX and XC is in the ratio of 3 ratio uh, 1. Okay, so A uh, and they give the information that uh, AB, A to B is 6P. If this side is 6P, so this side is also 6P. A to D is 8Q, AD is 8Q, so BC is also 8Q. So if I can do, this is BC, B to C is also 8Q, but BX is in the ratio of 3 and X to C is in the ratio of 1. So BX is basically 3 by 4 of the total and this is equals to 1 by 4 of the total BC. This is BC, 3 by 4 of BC and 1 by 4 of BC, right? Okay, now for the first part, express BX in terms of P and or Q. So B to X is basically 3 by 4 of BC, right? So BX is 3 by 4 of BC, that is 8Q. 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 2 times 3 is 6. 6Q six is the answer. Now for the second B part, express AX in terms of P and or Q. AX. A to X is basically A to B and then B to X, right? So AX is equals to AB plus BX. What is AB? AB is given to us that is 6P. And BX we just got that is uh, 6Q. So the answer is 6P plus 6Q. Now for the third part, Y is the point such that CY is uh, 3P plus Q. In the first, express AY in terms of P and or Q. Okay, so it means AY must be equals to AC plus CY. Right? Okay, so what, where is AC? AC. A to C. Okay, so if I can uh, draw the path of AC... So AC follows the path of A to D and then D to C. You can say A to D plus D to C plus C to 
cy right so where is ad ad is uh, 8q and d to c is 6p so we have 8q plus 6p plus this is cy 3p plus q so the p is uh, 6 7 8 9 and 8 plus 1 is 9 so the answer is 9p plus 9q for ay now for second part find the ratio ax ratio ay so this is ax and this is ay so let me write down 6 is common and uh, p plus q is ax ratio 9 is common and p plus q is ay so we can cancel the like terms p plus q and p plus q so we are left with 6 ratio 9 3 times 2 is 6 and 3 times 3 is 9 so in the ratio we have 2 ratio 3 question number 24 the diagram is a speed time graph of a part of the train's journey the train uh, slows down uniformly from a speed of 44 meter per second to the speed of 20 meter per second for, uh, in the time of 10 seconds. It then continues at a constant speed of 20 meter per second. In A part, find the deceleration when T is equal to 5. Okay, so T is equal to 5 is in the middle of 0 and 10. 5 is over here right so deceleration is basically the gradient so the d the gradient at t equals to 5 is exactly the same as the gradient of this line so we can find the gradient of this line um, so deceleration would be change in y from 44 to 20 that is 44 subtract 20 this is 24 and over change in x 0 to 10 is uh, 10 so this is uh, 24 by 10 is 2.4 meter per second square is the deceleration now for the b part find the speed when t equals to 5 so we need to find the speed this uh, s when t is equals to 5 so let's say this speed right okay so we can find the speed by using the concept of similar triangles so if i can draw both of the triangles separately considering this bigger one and this smaller one let me draw them first so this is a bigger triangle and its speed is from 20 to 44 this is equals to 24 and uh, this is 0 to 10 is 10 right and for the smaller triangle so this distance is base is 0 to 5 is 5 and this is 44 to s we can say 44 minus s so let me find out the speed by using the concept of similar triangle so we can say 44 minus s divide 24 this would be equals to 5 over 10 okay let me do the simplification so we have um, 2 times 5 times 1 is 5 5 times 2 is 10 right and then 2 is going to multiply with 44 minus s so this would be 88 minus 2s and this would be equals to 24 so we have minus 2s is equals to 24 subtract 88 so 24 take away 88 88 subtract 24 8 minus 4 is equals to 4 and 8 minus 2 is 6 so we have um, minus 2s is equals to minus 64 and s would be equals to 64 divides 2 2 times 1 is 2 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 times 2 is 4 so 32 meter per second is the speed when time is 5 seconds now for the c part the distance traveled from 0 to 10 is equals to the distance traveled from 10 to 10 plus k and then they said find k okay they said the distance travel from 0 to 10 is equal to the distance travel from 10 to 10 plus k it means distance travel in a speed time graph is basically equals to area under the curve so from uh, 0 to 10 the area under the curve is a sum of area of this triangle right angle triangle and area of this rectangle so area of this triangle is basically equals to half base times height base is 10 and the height is from 44 to 20 that is 24 right and area of this uh, rectangle is uh, 10 times 20 
and area for this is uh, um, 10 what is this length uh, this is length is k and the height is 20 so k times 20 because 10 plus k subtract 10 is k so we can say that the area for 0 to 10 is um, half base times height and then plus a rectangle 10 times 20 this would be equals to 20k so let me solve for k now so first we have 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 5 is 10 so 5 times 24 is 5 times 4 is 20 and 5 times 2 is 4 um, 5 times uh, 2 is 10 and plus 2 would be 12 so 120 plus 10 times 20 is 200 dividing by 20 this is equals to k right so uh, 200 and then 320 dividing by 20 zeros cancel with 0 2 times 1 is 2 2 times uh, 1 is 2 and 2 times 6 is 12 so the k value is 16 question number 25 in the triangle abc abc p and q are the points on ab and ac such that pq is parallel to bc ap is 6 and 3 cm uh, pb is 5 cm and bc is 12 cm find pq in a part we need to find pq this pq how much centimeter is this okay so here we can use a concept of a similar triangle like the bigger triangle abc and the smaller triangle apq right so we can compare the bases first the pq uh, the ratio of pq and uh, bc so let's say the pq is x and the bc is 12 and this would be equals to the side of um, a to p that is 3 and the side a b that is 3 plus 5 is 8 right so now let's do a cross multiplication so the angle x would be equals to 3 times 12 over 8 and 3 times 12 is 36 36 over 8 so let me divide it 8 and 36 8 times 4 is 32 when we subtract we have 4 bring the 0 down 8 times 5 is 40 so this is equals to 4.5 x is 4.5 or we can say that uh, pq side is 4.5 centimeter now for the b part the area of the triangle abc is x centimeter square the bigger triangle we can say abc its area is x centimeter square find an expression in terms of x for the area of the trapezium bcqp okay bcqp this is a trapezium so uh, as you can see so this bigger triangle its area is basically a sum of smaller triangle and this trapezium right so the area of the trapezium is basically the bigger triangle and then subtracting the area of the smaller triangle so we can say that the area of trapezium is equals to area of a triangle ABC subtract area of a triangle uh, APQ so area of a triangle ABC we have given that is x centimeter square we need to find area of the triangle APQ okay so to find the area of this triangle APQ we can compare the ratio the side ratios first so as you can see AB is 8 centimeter and AP is 3 centimeter so I, right so we can compare the side ratios for both triangle AB is 8 and AP is 3 right these are the side ratios but for area these are in centimeters for area we need to work for square centimeter square so we need to do it square right and this square is 8 square is 64 and 3 square is 9 and 
8 is the bigger one. So its area is x. Let's say the smaller area is s and this area is s. So we need to find the value for s in terms of x. So from here we can say s is equals to uh, x 9x over 64. Yes. So we can substitute it over here, the value for area of the smaller one. This is S and this would be X minus 9X over 64, right? So we can say uh, the area is 64X uh, minus 9X over 64. So from 64, take away 9 is 55. So 55x over 64 is the area of the trapezium BCQP in centimeter square. So that is the last question of our paper. If you have any queries, please let me know in a comment section. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time.